You're looking at seeds, the building blocks of what could soon be Canada's first homegrown COVID vaccine. If all goes to plan, it'll also be the world's first plant-based shot. Doses sucked from leaves could start rolling out within months, boosting the global supply of COVID-19 vaccines while injecting new life back into Canada's biopharmaceutical industry. Of course we're excited about the result. In a news release, Medicago, the Quebec-based company behind the vaccine, just announced positive phase 3 efficacy and safety results, saying its plant-based vaccine showed 75% efficacy against any symptoms from the Delta variant. That's higher than the estimated effectiveness against Delta offered by Pfizer and Moderna's vaccines, as seen in some studies. This is one of the germination chambers. Medicago's chief medical officer, Brian Ward, is eager to show off how far this small Canadian company has come. I think it's extraordinarily important. Over the last 20 years, Canada has actually seen a lot of uh, pharmaceutical companies move out. Manufacturing facilities have left, research facilities have left. We're reversing the trend. From insulin to polio and the development of an Ebola vaccine, Canadian scientists have long been stepping up. The leadership matters, matters a hell of a lot. Mario Posamai is a forensic investigator who served as a senior advisor for the SARS Commission. He insists public health leaders ignored lessons from past crises and this pandemic revealed decades of neglect. I think we, we really need to look at, at vaccines and vaccine production as a strategic issue. We can't next time be cap in hand waiting for, you know, Ford manufacturer to produce it for us. The federal government is now racing to rebuild Canada's biopharmaceutical sector, including construction of a vaccine manufacturing plant in Montreal. Lakshmi Krishnan is the director general of the National Research Council. We hope that in due time, all of that will align and we will be able to produce vaccines in Canada. They are transferred here because they have more space. We have Isabelle Caron is Medicago's director of manufacturing. She says with funding from the federal government, they've been able to scale up production. Unlike mRNA vaccines that offer our body a set of genetic instructions to make the spike protein, Medicago's vaccine offers those instructions to plants. Plant cells then grow virus-like particles covered in spike proteins, but don't contain the virus itself. When injected into the body, they show our immune system what to stick to and block out. Of course, it's a lot of work to get ready to manufacture a vaccine, but it's an exciting journey. The plant-based vaccine developed in this lab is truly novel. Other labs across the country are now busy too. In Ontario, they're working on a vaccine that can be inhaled. And in British Columbia, a company is now in human trials with an oral vaccine pill. So this will be an optimization uh, batch run for It's us. early days, but this oral vaccine research is also being sped up by federal funding. Alexander Graves is the CEO of Simvivo. He says a pill that delivers genetic material from the virus to our body would have countless advantages. So the way that we can envision this is that you could actually ship a vaccine directly to somebody's home for self-administration, as opposed to having to go and book a vaccine appointment at a clinic. Medicago is now getting ready to submit its data to Health Canada for final regulatory approval, hopefully building Canada's response to this pandemic while revitalizing the biopharmaceutical industry for the next one. Okay, so Christine, the, the technology for plant-based vaccines, super interesting, but why is it useful? What, what's the advantage here? Well, once this technology is established, there's incredible potential. The big difference is that many vaccines require these giant stainless steel bioreactors, and inside the temperature is carefully controlled to grow the key ingredients for their vaccines. And there's always this fear that another virus could get in and contaminate everything. In plant-based vaccines, there are no bioreactors. The greenhouses are what's growing the plants, which are growing the virus-like particles inside their own cells. So if this technology becomes established, this could be a really safe, stable supply of vaccines. And down the road, it would get much cheaper to produce. Okay. Christine Bierak in Toronto. Thank you. You're welcome.